Hi, Nicholas Shrek. Great to have you back on the show again. This is your third time, I believe, uh, joining us. Hello there, Ken Eakins. It is indeed the third time, and hopefully three times will be a charm. As the old homily has it, we will see how charming we can be. Excellent, excellent. So today we we don't we're not sort of um, looking at a specific book or a specific thing, but we're looking really more at a specific concept, well, a couple of concepts really today, um, and having more of a kind of conversation. Um, and we kind of want to look at the kind of idea of kind of modern conspiracy theory and and also the left hand path because you have a, a quite a firm take on what the left hand path is, and also um, mm -hmm. you seem to have been quite interested in conspiracy theories, especially of late. Yes. Yeah. Well, I should I should say that uh, in recent months, me and a few associates are, are concentrating right now on the sort of think tank aspect of a project called Oasis. And Oasis is a movement which I and others have founded around the world to counter what we see as one of the greatest threats to spiritual advancement, but also just to general intellectual development and a cancer in our society in general worldwide. And, and a number of us have come together who have been concerned about this threat. And what I'm referring to is the you know, obvious prevalence of what I would call not conspiracy theory, but conspiracy fantasy unfounded, completely ridiculous, emotionally based propaganda narratives, usually informed by a very clear political partisan ideology, and yet pretending to be veiled to be secret information. And what I'm talking about is unfounded conspiracy fantasy. Am I saying that there are no conspiracies? Of course, there are conspiracies, but we, we need to get into that and approach that with critical reasoning and logic. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these people who are infected with this kind of thinking, and I have compassion for them, actually. I don't see them as an enemy to be destroyed, but fellow human beings to be awakened from delusional thinking, which is being foisted on them by exploitative, manipulative forces. The very thing that they fear and hate is what is steering them into delusional and, and you know untrue thinking. So Oasis is a project that we are looking at at this point. It is just a think tank. We are studying where do these ideas come from? Who is spreading them? The old Latin question, qui bono, who benefits? from the spreading of them? What are the historical roots of these things? They didn't just come spontaneously. Many of them have a built-in agenda, usually a political partisan one, either left-wing or right-wing, or for particular political individuals. So yeah, so I have been looking at this for quite a long time. And I think an important thing is out of personal experience, of course, as pretty much as soon as I began my public career, with Radio Werewolf, and in the 1980s, I became the target of the satanic panic immediately, even before that had a name. So I'm all too keenly aware of just how dangerous, how insane, and how completely detached from reality this kind of thinking can be. And, you know, Zena, my ex-wife, and I sort of thought that had been quelled, that the satanic panic had been ended, largely because of her doing, because of her very fierce public representation uh, on television and the media, fighting it aggressively, she did an excellent job of defeating the satanic panic by saying, I am a real person, your accusations are lies, and I refute them. And over the years, since we have moved to Europe, uh, you know, particularly in the Anglo-American sphere, this kind of satanic-based conspiracy thinking has really become part of the mainstream to the point of it's infected, you know, the very heart of mainstream American politics, and it, it's infecting the whole Western world largely now. So 
I have to point out, this comes from my own personal experience with this. Uh, I am daily a target of conspiracy thinking. I've been accused of absolute nonsense since I was in my 20s. So, you know, it's personal to me. And I see how delusional it is. I mean, I know, and I happen to be in a position to have known many of the other people who are dragged into these conspiracy plots so I can refute them. So that's as a general introduction, I just wanted to add that, that, that this is not just an intellectual abstract thing I'm considering. I consider it a real threat to society and even part of my spiritual teaching because it's, impo you know, if at the heart of spiritual awareness is truth. Mm -hmm. And when you have this many millions of people caught up in untruth and aggressively supporting untruth, ironically, calling themselves truthers and believing that they are discovering the real truth through their research. Um, and in fact, they're just digging themselves deeper into a rabbit hole of delusions and lies and hallucinations that borders on psychosis, really. It now becomes necessary part of my spiritual work to fight that. So the first stage of that that's going on right now is trying to understand where did this come from? What what are the roots of it? What makes it tick? And then we will eventually get into how to diffuse it and hopefully how to deprogram people into critical thinking, logic, reason, and rationality to approach these things from a sane, sane and nonpartisan objective perspective. Yeah, well, I was talking to a friend recently and we had uh, we were talking about conspiracy thinking or you know conspiracy delusion, whatever you want to call it. Um, and one of one theory we we came up with of you know obviously there's many roots to these conspiracy theories um but one theory we came up with was obviously the attendance at churches has started to decline quite heavily and it really behooves christianity to have conspiracy theorists especially when there's a, a satan figure involved and um and right. it's interesting how much biblical talk starts to come into um a lot of these theories isn't it it's uh yeah, well, I, I think that's absolutely true. And in the research that Oasis has done thus far, as I touched on a little bit in, in our earlier discussion, uh, I think Christianity, I mean, what is Christianity? It is several different fragmented sects based on an ancient Middle Eastern spiritual tradition. Some of these versions of Christianity have nothing to do with each other. A lot of American evangelical movement that presents itself as Christianity has really nothing to do with the teaching of Jesus Christ as we know it, let alone uh, if we get into the Gnostic teachings that we find in the Nag Hammadi documents. Um, so yes, the fact is the roots of almost all of this conspiracy fantasy propaganda narrative, which is how I try to very specifically define it, is rooted in the dualistic thinking of Abrahamic religion, that the, the good there is a battle between absolute good and absolute evil. It requires the dehumanization of a demonic enemy that is completely sinister, evil, you know, and and you know, like a cliche, a caricature of the satanic. Mm. Not that I in any way doubt that there is the satanic, but we can get into that. It is not what these people think it is. But absolutely, this is a distorted, declined, mutated version of evangelical Christianity. And underneath it, you always have that as a basic foundation, is this Abrahamic dualistic thinking, which is the opposite of genuine mysticism, which is non-dual. It is not based in this very simplistic cartoon idea of good versus evil. And and I, I, you know, the first thing I can say about that is when, when people are faced with these conspiracy fantasies that they become completely obsessed with, um, you have to look and see: is the theory presenting the so-called malefactors in this as 100% evil monsters without, you know, who who are determined to kill off the human race, and you know, this kind of extreme malevolence, like a villain in a James Bond movie, if that is the case, then you know it's bullshit. And I find it shocking how rare it is for people to say, well, 
if you're completely dehumanizing the other side, then this is basically propaganda. And it is, it is a uniquely American phenomenon, a strange amalgam of evangelical, apocalyptic, doomsday Christianity. You know, any day the, the, the devil is going to be pushing this huge plot that never quite happens. That is a hallmark of this kind of thinking. And we have really looked into it and studied it. Every day, you know, people who are immersed in this kind of thinking and they're not exposed to any other are being bombarded with panic headlines you know tomorrow the globalists you will not believe what the globalists are doing tomorrow it's so hideous and so horrible we can hardly even tell you and just they're whipped into a constant state of fear the equivalent to get to your earlier statement of you know a constant brimstone and fire sermon from an evangelical preacher you know and it's all about panic it's all about fear it's not even any longer about a, a desire to have some particular kind of governance or political ideology it's just sheer panic and and that and panic and fear blinds anyone so even if you're interested in truth about these matters fear and panic of the alex jones kind of hysteria is never a useful way to or prism to look at these things yeah it's, i think one of the things that kind of bolsters the conspiracy theory theorists especially is every now and then they're right uh, but it's like, right. but if you take this like if you think of it as a pie this is the way i always think about it they every now and then they get a very thin slice of truth don't they and then for everyone then all, all of a sudden the entire pie is real and that's the way i kind of right. it. it's kind of uh, it, that's yeah it's it's mad <laughs> well it it is largely propaganda if you look at the roots of it and propaganda, the science of propaganda, and a strange thing is, like particularly since the Ukraine war and the COVID phenomena and the MAGA phenomenon, the Black Lives Matter phenomena, all of which created a hysterical, panicky narrative about all of them. Um, people seem not to be really aware what propaganda is. This is a strange phenomena of our times. You know, we know in World War I and World War II, both all sides spread complete lies, but propaganda only works if it, like the, there are three kinds of propaganda. Black propaganda, which it basically is completely a lie. It's based on, on demonizing the enemy, you know, Gray propaganda includes some truth to it, and white propaganda comes right out and tells you we are against this enemy, and here are our rational reasons why. It's not trying to trick you. But most of what is going on today is sheer black propaganda. It's, it's you know, people don't seem to be able to tell the difference between factual reporting and propaganda. So, but of course, propaganda and conspiracy thinking of this type only works if there's a grain of truth that, you know, but it's really gotten to the point where that grain is tiny, you know, of course. Now, a strange phenomenon, too, that we have noticed in Oasis in studying this lately, maybe in the past year and a half, the principal proponents of this kind of thinking are so deluded that they've gotten to the point, and you may have noticed this yourself, where they're saying, isn't it funny? All of our conspiracy theories turned out to be right. So we're not conspiracy theories that we, we are, we're telling the truth. We, you know, and our enemies were wrong. And, and even though there's absolutely no proof that that's true, this seems to be a new mutation of this kind of apocalyptic evangelical thinking. Like we were totally right. And the evil globalists or whoever, the Luciferian monster cabal that they think it is, was lying and now they've been disproven. So this is actually quite disturbing that they not only are terrified of this threat from these conspiracy, but they believe they have been proven right. And they actually are living in a cognitive, um, you know, confirmation bias nightmare where they think they have been proven right. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's like yeah. a new arrogance with these people. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, Inter I, I've noticed one thing that um, it seems to have spread like 
in the past it was always a bit of a subculture wasn't it conspiracy theory it was like you're interested in ufos and maybe the bilderberg group or you know um uh, bohemian grove and all these kind of like more esoteric kind of things whereas now mm -hmm. it seems to have spread I, i'm i'm thinking of a local guy there's a guy down the road in the town next to the town i'm in he's a youtuber um and before he um sort of got into all this stuff he used to make videos of him walking around the british countryside and it was kind of like meant to be like celebrating british countryside and ram you know walking what we call rambling here right um, right and then he posted one video where he was uh, it was him sort of making a commentary about a conspiracy thinker here in the uk and it blew up it went absolutely huge now he's got what what, what what was the particular theory um it was something to do with oh god what was it i can't actually remember which one it was now it's such a while ago now what was it about it was a post covid thing so i think it was covid related but um mm -hmm. i can't remember the actual what the actual source was but what was interesting about him is that he's part of he's um an older you know more what i'd consider like i guess you know middle class kind of um not someone that you would normally have associated with conspiracy theory and you find that in america as well if you look you know you have housewives and uh you know the karens or whatever you want to call them uh, these days and they're all conspiracy theorists like all of them but yes it, it is i mean i know because i am the target of this kind of thinking and i see the kind of people they are you know they are not raving lunatics these are are employed people who live in the real world who have who are living now in an alternate reality where they think the, the it is a folk religion let's call it what it is it is a new 21st century folk religion that is larger than many you know small alternative religions it is certainly mainstream it is not a subcultural niche i mean like i'll give you a specific example and i want to talk about some it's easy to be vague and abstract about this but i want to talk about real experiences a very intelligent woman I know in California a few years ago called me panicky in in Germany and said, Nicholas, can you check and tell me has the Pope and the Italian Prime Minister been arrested just now in a pedophilia ring? Is that because in America they are hiding the news, the news is not reporting it, but we gather that that's true. And I said, are you out of your mind? No. How do you really think that wouldn't be reported? so and this is an intelligent person uh you know and i had to gently but firmly say this is complete nonsense do you honestly think that the media no matter how much we can't trust it or how corrupted by corporate interest it is would not report a huge story like that but she did and that was a kind of turning point because this is an intelligent educated person and i thought how in the fucking world are you thinking that that is a reality that we live in, that's something that huge. And, and I wanted to mention how, where I started really focusing on this, although in the 80s, of course, I battled it head on with the satanic panic, um, which now people are acting like, well, I get, there might've been something to all that satanic panic. Now people are acting like, I guess, I guess all that was true. So a lot of the work we did to combat that was actually in vain because it's, you know, like a like a, a cancer returning, it's come back. Um, but I wanted to point out where I started really seeing how deeply entrenched this is. In 2012, I went back to America after being away from it, living in Germany since 1999. So this was deep into the Obama regime. And I went out into rural California to a certain area out there and waitresses, clerks at shops, uh, associates of mine, people out in this rural part of California, they all shared a fear. This was December, November of 2012, that Obama was going to not ever leave office, number one, that he was going to establish martial law, that he was going to both institute Sharia law, because of course he is a secret Muslim, and at the same time make homosexuality mandatory. I don't know how a strict Muslim would be doing that, but that's a cognitive dissonance beyond my grasp. And, you know, they are then, 
these, this Muslim homosexual cabal is then going to take all the guns away from Republicans. And they had proof positive that there were, that FEMA, which is the emergency, um, say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, the, the, the organizational bureaucracy that deals with federal emergency issues had stockpiled coffins in their area because they were going to start slaughtering Republicans in this takeover. Even now, the complete illogic, actually, Islamic fundamentalists would love Republicans. Their viewpoint is not particularly different because they both are coming from the extreme Abrahamic sin mentality. So, you know, my mind was spinning at the, these were, again, not insane, drooling lunatics. These were functional, normal people. And they completely believed this as if I had entered an alternate universe where everyone agreed, you know, you better watch out. If you go into the cities, they're going to start taking the guns away and killing Republicans and Obama's never, and Sharia law will be instituted. And they believed it. Mm -hmm. Now, then of course, none of those things happened. And yet nobody ever said, oh, I guess we were lied to. I guess this was bullshit. And they just moved on to new explanations. Like you're did. probably aware that the Jehovah's Witness keep saying the world's going to end on this date and it doesn't end. So then they come up with reasons why and they, they say there's a new date for the apocalypse. Well, that's a feature of this kind of thinking that is so illogical. You would think at some point these people would get angry and say, we have been lied to. We have been had. We are being tricked. But they never get angry at the people lying to them. They they say, well, their their heart was in the right place, and it, there must have been something to it. But the forces of good must somehow have defeated Obama's Islamic homosexual agenda, uh, you know. And then there's a new threat tomorrow, though. There's a new one, always always a new, you know, Medusa head rising for them to play whack a mole with. So that that was what got me thinking. Seeing, and this was before Trump. There was no MAGA movement, but I saw before he was just the figurehead of something that already existed deeply in the American heartland, so to speak. So that's what got me thinking about it was that moment. It's interesting because I often think about this, like conspiracy theory and conspiracy thinking is kind of it's it sort of fulfills the same function as religion doesn't it in some ways like if you're if something te it, it kind of explains chaos so if you if you're kind of a you know if you're in a religion uh, you know like a christianity sort of religion you're something chaotic happens in the world well it was god's will you know you um god moves in mysterious ways whereas if that same thing happens to the conspiracy minded well that was clearly the illuminati or that was you know that was the the deep state doing that you know as right. a, a boogie right. man to blame the chaos on so it kind of well that that's I, I would say real religion I think this is important to make this clear uh, religion itself based on the mystical experience of reality I mean religion is a way to ultimately in, in its most positive level to clarify what reality is and to experience it without all these obscurations whatever spiritual tradition that is the point of it this kind of thinking is a distortion and a misuse of religion. I would not, you know, I would not say that it, it it's it's anti-religion. And to refer to the teachings of Rene Guénon, who was the one of the founders of what is called traditionalism, this kind of thinking is counter-initiatory. It does not lead to enlightenment. It does not lead to liberation. It leads to fear. It leads to division, it leads to hatred, and all of these emotions obscure our ability to perceive truth. So I would say it's a caricature of religion, and in that way, I think what Oasis is starting to look at, there is a Gnostic aspect to these conspiracy thinking in that it is demiurgic. It is a false anti-religion that is forming but a religion based on the kind of demiurgic emotions of hatred, of division, of, de of not seeing the non-dual state of reality in a calm way, a transcendent way, but, but fearful, becoming a victim 
and feeling, you know, it's, it's basically paranoid schizophrenia turned into a religious faith, like seeing threats everywhere and, and a martyr complex, like I am on the side of good, I'm on the side of the angels, and I'm fighting the evil cabal, whatever, whatever it may be. They're, you know, the Bilderberger group, the Rothschilds, you know, what a Stanley Kubrick, whatever, whatever <laughs> it may be at that moment, um, the Illuminati, you know. Um, so that's, I, I would say it is anti-religion. It, I mean, this, this does not reflect the true thinking of actual esoteric Christianity even. Esoteric Christianity does not, is not see itself as a victim, you know, that this is a particular mutation and distortion of Abrahamic religion. But it always, and, and the other odd thing that I wanted to point out, like it was 50% of what we were going to talk about, is it's, like you said, a lot of this is diluted Christianity in a, like a political cult based on Christianity. But a lot of its informing ideas and philosophy comes from 19th century occultism, particularly theosophy. A lot of these ideas people don't realize are Blavatsky ideas. And you'd be amazed, I think, or maybe you realize how many of these conspiracy fantasists believe in Atlantis, Lemuria, uh, that there were ancient, you know, technologically advanced civilizations on Earth that you know, the current deep state and governments are hiding the proof of ancient astronauts, um, the root races, this kind of thing. Uh, one thing I noticed in like my epiphany in California in 2012, when I encountered these people that so firmly believe there was going to be this, you know, nightmarish Obama dictatorship coming to slaughter them. Uh, they all, many of them also believed in this Anunnaki nonsense, this complete misunderstanding of Babylonian and Mesopotamian religion. And uh, another part of it, I mean, it's so complex to really look at this. You may be aware of it. There is a strange anti-religious tone to this conspiracy thinking because it basically condemns all religions as ped pedophiliac havens of, of secret satanic behavior, all of them, every, pretty much every mainstream religion, it dismisses as pedophiliac, which is its main accusation against everything, this obsession well, that's it, with child abuse. That's because of um, Epstein, though, isn't it? That was one of the, one, the slices of the pie that turned out to be true, you know, so they're, they're right, but, that you know, now, yeah. But that's, that's a good example. Now, Epstein, completely irreligious. A, a nihilist, a uh, hedonist who believed absolutely nothing. He didn't have a political ideology, just a just a wealthy person who exploited his power to satiate his lust. There is, you know, and it's interesting, you know, there's an example of someone really doing what these people think all religions and pop, pop but he was completely irreligious. He believed nothing. Mm -hmm. He did. He wasn't part of a cult. He was just a nihilistic hedonist who had the means to pay people off to get away with with his pedophilia crimes you know and look at Hastert the republican who had abused you know his male students nobody ever brings him up these republicans who so it's very selective mm. they want their pedophilia to be secret they want a, a pedophilia that people are getting away from because they claim the deep state is protecting them you know, but Epstein was, in fact, prosecuted by the state. Uh, whatever mysterious way he died, the fact is, it isn't like the state approved of what he did and let him get away with it. He was convicted. And so is Ghislaine Maxwell. So if it's, you know, but logic doesn't matter to these people. Roman Polanski is a fugitive from justice for raping one 13-year-old girl who has forgiven him even. And yet he is still a fugitive of justice. So, you know, but this is logic. Mm -hmm. The the judicial system and the police are seeking him as a criminal. So where where is this elite that is allowed to get away with pedophilia? You know, this is this is one of their main myths is that somehow the government approves of and the the deep state or whatever lay layers of control they believe there are approve of pedophilia and are encouraging it and are not 
convicting it, you know, but child trafficking is a crime and it is being convicted all the time, you know, and where, well, who's really doing that? People's parents, people's relatives, uh, schools, priests, that's who's doing it, not satanic cults, no, you know, who's doing it is, is people's fathers and uncles, you know. I have a friend who's really deep into, um, he likes particularly to pick holes at the fact that I'm interested in the occult. <laughs> and the occult is like the boogeyman, the convenient boogeyman of um, right. of, of conspiracy theory. And one of the theories that was, a, it was really big a couple of years ago was that Hillary Clinton and, and co um, were uh, doing an Alistair Crowley ritual. Uh, that was the, right. only descri that was the only description and were sucking the blood of children to get, or, or using the blood of children to get something called endochrome, I think it's called. Or something. No, no. Well, this, this is something Oasis has researched, and we will yeah. be issuing a report. Adrenochrome. Adrenochrome. Yes. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. This, this, this is pretty much all across the board with all these groups. They believe that they don't even know what occultism is, for mm. one thing. They just say they use the word occult, and they believe occultism means killing, which goes back to you know, oh, the yeah. most ancient conspiracy theories and satanic beliefs like into the, the Middle Lodge. Ages. Even the yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. this this has been going on forever. This is just, this is just a new, you know, a new set decorating and dressing up of very old theories, the blood libel, you know, that's been going on forever. And, and mm -hmm. but the idea is that Hollywood celebrities are all occultists. Well, I've lived in Hollywood Believe me, being a prominent occultist in Hollywood did not lead to people saying, oh, you know, let us make you a star. On the contrary, it's shut doors. These mm. Hollywood is nihilistic money worship. It's not these people have no occult beliefs. They don't have any spiritual beliefs whatsoever. None. So the idea is that the elite and we have to get into that phrase elite, oh, yeah. the elites, that's a, that's a big they one. call it now, the, yeah. the elites. Are, are drinking the blood, you know, using a worldwide, incredibly Baroque, intricate, hidden system in which children are being harvested for adrenochrome that allows movie stars and rich celebrities and basically any liberal that Republicans don't like or that are considered to be globalists are drinking the blood of children and, and harvesting adrenochrome to remain immortal and, you know, all kinds of other What's crazy like that, is but... they always used to attach they'd say an alistair crowley ritual so being you know um someone who's you know part of the thalemic current i suppose you could say um i was i, I this guy my friend who's he considers himself an expert by the way in in these conspiracy theories so i said okay they always are yeah, yeah. <laughs> i said okay which alistair crowley ritual and right he went oh um it's you know it, it's just it's the the main one and i'd be like well which one right there's, there's a lot of right they're not they're not the gnostic mass uh yeah. you know which, <laughs> which, right <laughs> it clearly doesn't have anything to do with harvesting the blood of children it has technically it has uh symbolically it has children in it but it doesn't right <laughs> yeah and it's like well if you can't if you're an expert and all these conspiracy theorists are experts Surely you'd be able to name the ritual. You know, you'd be able to tell me some right. of the details. No, they never, yeah. they never can. They never can. Then they, then they get back to just well, do your own research. It's out there. Go find it. When, yeah. whenever you confront these, I mean, you and I know what occultism is. We have experienced it. They're not really interested in the reality of it. They don't want to hear from you. They want to just push this vague disinformation. A ritual. Well, which one? Mm. You know, and you know. Well, we should maybe maybe we should take a break from our our discourse and ask some of these questions because this some of the questions that I on my social media today when we agreed to do this interview I asked some of the people in my Facebook page and Instagram page to ask questions that that address this confluence of occultism and conspiracy. So maybe you can answer you can ask some of those to me and uh, I'll answer them. And I think that really approaches some of the crucial key issues here. Yeah, so we've got one here. Um, this is from an unnamed person on Instagram, but it says, uh, let me get something straight here. You spent years saying you were part of an elitist organization full of strong people who rule the world. You later denounced the satanic philosophy. But that doesn't mean you weren't necessarily dealing with powerful elitist people. However, now you say that a select elite governing the world is a conspiracy theory. Which instance were you lying, Mr. Shrek, in the 80s or now? Right. 
Right. Yeah. That, that, that comes from someone who obviously, and I told this person, he wrote to me privately. I said, well, I'll answer it publicly because it's a, it's a valid question. Mm -hmm. And, and another reason why I'm very conscious of this whole conspiracy fantasy thinking, this particular interview that I did uh, in 1988 with Tom Metzger has been taken out of context and quoted over and over and over hundreds of times by Christian evangelical groups. And they're assuming that when I speak of an elite, that, I mean, this is crazy based on my own history, that I must be some kind of globalist liberal, <laughs> which I am very far from. You know, I'm, I'm more conservative, more traditionalist. In fact, I'm a monarchist. I believe in tradition. I am deeply conservative in the true sense of the word. And these people, they, they have misinterpreted what I was saying in 1988 when I spoke of an elite. I still believe, yes, I'm talking about like we need a platonic philosopher king ruling the world, not, you know, but they, they think, they, they project what they think. Kanye West, they think I'm talking about Katy Perry or Hillary Clinton, people I have no respect for, never have even thought of. So they, they have taken my words out of context from this when I was, you know, operating the werewolf order, which had a ideological dimension to its magical work. And they're totally getting it wrong and assuming that the elite I was referring to, which meant a meritocracy of intellectual people who are like philosopher kings, that that's who should be ruling the world. I was not referring to what they think the elite is, you know, Schwab or Fauci or, you know, the, the, these, you know, these are not, that's not even remotely in my mind, pop culture figures that I despise more than anyone. And I think, so it's, it's important to differentiate, but people will take whatever, they, they take this terminology. I do believe there should be a ruling elite, as I'm assuming you as a Telemite would believe if you accept what the book of the law says. I'm not a Telemite, but you know, if you take it on face value, that nor, nor was Crowley when he spoke of an elite referring to Katy Perry or Kanye West or you know, whatever these idiots think the Illuminati is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yes, I absolutely believe there should even be a theocratic elite of extremely intelligent, well educated philosopher kings or queens ruling the world and deciding what happens. Okay. I don't even believe in democracy. I don't even believe that the average person, should, especially today, misinformed as they are, should be deciding who should govern. So, you know, that I just want to say it's a major misunderstanding. The elite I was talking about would have actually been more authoritarian than even they want it to be. You know, so it's funny that and, and only now things are so crazy that I'm accused of being a liberal and a Marxist when I have opposed liberalism and Marxism and Bolshevism, you know, all my life very aggressively. But this is this 1984 Brave New World, you know, uh, mashup where words are not used properly. Like people throw the words fascist and communist around without having any historical idea what they mean. It just means someone I don't like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the globalists that they hate are not Marxists in any way. They are capitalists. Mm -hmm. And a weird thing is a lot of what these naive and gullible people seem to think are sinister plots is actually capitalism as we know it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like it, the, the word conspiracy is thrown around weirdly. Like, yeah, very powerful, wealthy people that run corporations have a lock on news, on information, on magazines, on newspapers, on the media. That's quite obvious, but that's not a conspiracy. That is capitalism, which most of these people approve of. So it's very ironic how wrong they get it. Yeah, it's interesting because if when you look at kind of the term elite, because it used to be, what was it before? It was, it was globalists was the the big one a few years ago wasn't it um and then before that it was illuminati and then before that it would have been 
I don't know, the, uh, the Masons, maybe? Uh, well, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, a lot, mo most, of, most of this, and this is a point I really want to emphasize, and we'll be getting into when Oasis starts releasing documents to clarify these things. Most of these conspiracy thinking goes, you can find Catholic conspiracy theories about Freemasons that are exactly the same thing. Freemasons are secretly meeting, they want to create a one world government, a um, a new world order, novus ordum seclorum that's on the dollar bill that these people are so frightened of, which is just a poetic phrase that the founding fathers used. Um, uh, most of it is just the, the anti-Freemasonic conspiracies jazzed up with new words. And globalist is has become almost meaningless phrase that they use. They they pit the nationalists against who are good against the globalists who are evil. And globalists, very frankly, is very often just a synonym for the evil Jews. Again, it's a it's a polite euphemistic way to refer to, you know, the elders of Zion. That's what they mean by globalist is the way that Stalin used the phrase rootless cosmopolitan to mean the Jews. So these are ancient you know, beliefs, and that it's just new. It's kind of like Scientology very much. There's a lot of similarities to the kitschy, almost campy science fiction thinking and L. Ron Hubbard's bizarre view of the world in that they're just replacing the old conspiracy words, Freemasons, Jews, etc., Rosicrucians, with these new words, glob globalists and pedophiles. It's like and you know what does that even mean? Who are we talking about exactly? It's very vague. When you did, know, when did conspiracy theory? I've asked this on the show a few times actually of different guests. I think conspiracy theorists went truly dark, as in before that it was more of a fun subculture. You know, as I was saying, the, the X Files era. It was more of a generally speaking, it was a, a fun subculture that blended into the UFO. Right. Um, right. You know, and it was it uh, it was you know it was more high strangeness. Whereas, I think after nine eleven is where it started to really become yeah. a lot darker. And what was interesting yeah. was it also conspiracy theory really felt like more of a left wing movement originally. It was it felt very left. Absolutely. Centric. And now it's completely flipped to the right, and that's really interesting. Like um, you know, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you're immediately tagged by the left as a right winger. You know, you're. Um, Right. I mean, of course, the, le the left has all kinds of conspiracy theories, and I want to make that very clear. I am absolutely not committed to any partisan political party. One of the worst things about opposing this conspiracy fantasy thinking is if you say this whole cluster of ideas is not true, then they automatically say, oh, well, then you must be on the other side. You are a globalist. You might, oh, if you think Trump is a blithering idiot, which I do, let me say that loudly and clearly in case anyone doubts it, he is a blithering idiot. He always has been before he entered politics. He always will be, you know, he's a moron. He's just a moron. And I don't, I'm not obsessed with him. He's not taking space in my head, as they say, but he's just a blithering, ignorant moron. Um, then they think, oh, then you must love Biden or you must love Hillary Clinton. No, I, I have never voted for anyone in my life. I don't even believe in America or the founding fathers or the constitution or any of it at all. So I reject the whole system, but this is a, a insoluble aspect that I know you can't solve. If you say these particular groups of conspiracy theories that you happen to like because they appeal to your emotions and your political feelings, if I think they're bullshit, then I must support the other side. No, I don't support either. And to get to your point about, yes, originally, like let's take Mae Brussel, who I'm sure you know who she was, and Mae Brussel's ideas are not different. She was basically saying there was a deep state, though she used another word, and they have omnipotent control over the media, over everything, and that they have an agenda, and that they're super efficient and able to, to shift societal thinking. And yet she was coming from a very left-wing point of view. And to a certain degree, Marxism is a leftist conspiracy theory. It, 
you know, Das Kapital, the, the ideas of Karl Marx are a conspiracy theory. And however, one that has been accepted and adopted by world governments like the Soviet Union or Cuba or Vietnam um, or China. But that, you know, that, that's a left-wing conspiracy theory. This is the way reality is. The evil capitalists are doing this. The proletariat are the good. They will fight the evil capitalists. There's, you know, and it's even a God-given Hegelian destiny that Marxism will be the only ideology. It is completely a conspiracy theory. So, you know, right-wingers that think we're only attacking the right, Marxism is a conspiracy theory. The Frankfurt School that, that really did try to push Marxist thinking into academia, that's a left-wing conspiracy. Um, so yeah, the, the, it's interesting. Let's take a real conspiracy. I think it's important to say there are conspiracies. This is another straw man argument that these conspiracy theorists will do. They'll say, oh, well, are you saying there never were any conspiracies? Of course there were. Criminals conspire to hide their crimes. Politicians and emperors and kings and queens have always conspired to hide the things they're doing, but eventually somebody squeals. Eventually you find out there was a conspiracy to kill Julius Caesar. We found out who did that conspiracy. They're, they're limited, you know, of course. Uh, when somebody conspires to commit a crime, it's a conspiracy. But eventually we find out, and let's take you know, let's take the JFK murder. There is no doubt in my mind there was a conspiracy in the true sense of the word to kill John F. Kennedy. However, if the deep state is so powerful, you know, I and many other researchers and scholars, you can discover basically what happened. We don't have every name and every date and detail, but you can put together basically what happened. It was a conspiracy and we know who conspired. We know their names who conspired to hide the conspiracy, but it wasn't an omnipotent, all-powerful conspiracy, nor the assassination of Bobby Kennedy or Martin Luther King or many others. Um, you know, so there are real conspiracies, but the fact is we usually find out what they were about. They because And, and this is maybe the core issue, and I think you would agree, uh, a friend of mine, the musician Ethan Gold, who we, I have discussed this with, was saying, have these people ever met people? <laughs> have they ever met how incompetent most human beings are? Have you, you know, in an office, could you hide who's having an affair? Can you hide who's stealing money from the till? You know, in, in any, like in a band, could you get four people to agree on even doing a song the same way, let alone hide, you know, vast specter-like, Blofeld-like plots and plans can, you know, where do they think there are these incredibly efficient human beings who are capable of maintaining secrets for centuries about remember, aliens and adrenochrome? When I spoke to John Ronson about this on this show, I think, I think it was on the show, but um, he said that, you know, at the time 9-11, because this is 2008, I think I spoke to him about this, um, when you think about the, the conspiracy theory of 9-11, one of them is that the planes were landed beforehand and all the passengers were executed and etc. It's like, A, who, which human being is going to do that? Who, you know, which set of human beings is going to line up a bunch of innocent people against the wall in America and shoot them to death? Right. And secondary, how the hell are they going to keep that secret? Because the amount of people that must be involved for that to happen, right. like, like you said, right. is, is staggering. So it's, 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 unfathomable yeah it drives me insane well, that, i mean see see we we drive ourselves crazy when we go into the details of these things it's a total lack of critical thinking number one secondly a, a failure to understand human nature people are not efficient organize you i mean have you have these people ever met anyone in the cia the cia is a slipshod inefficient organization that has failed again and again and again. It couldn't even figure out that the Soviet Union was falling apart when it was T totally taken by surprise. Uh, we know what CIA involvement was in the Kennedy assassination because they were sloppy. Because we, you know, they they were dealing with the mafia. They weren't dealing with secret societies or aliens. They're just dealing with grubby 
everyday powerful people who had a political agenda. So this is the core thing. And the, the most frightening thing about the world is not that these evil cabals are conspiring to do these sinister things. I would say more frightening, nobody is in charge. Nobody, there, it would be great if we had a secret society of super efficient people who were able to arrange any damn thing. The reason our society is falling apart, there is no leadership. It's rudderless, it's chaos. There's nobody at the wheel and we're headed over a cliff. It would be great if somebody took control, but there is, you know, the Illuminati, you know, was the historical phenomenon, it was a little tiny Bavarian group that had no power ever, you know, but you know, that this is the thing. Who looks at the world, for instance, let's take Biden, who is like now, now that Obama's gone, the arch or Clinton, the arch enemy of these people who see him as the ultimate communist globalist imposing this dictatorship. Why, if the Democratic Party was this powerful cabal of pedophile Satanists, you know, that, that have, you know, occult mind control powers, why would they pick this bumbling, senile guy who can hardly give a speech properly, you know, who, who failed in Afghanistan dismally? What, what, what was their plot there? You know, but they, they'll come up with a reason. Why would they not have a super charismatic young antichrist figure who would enchant the whole world? You know, what, obviously this is a political miscalculation. Why would they pick this person of all people to be their spearhead and figurehead? But, you know, is, is that just logical? And yet they, you know, there are some people that actually believe Trump is the actual real president of the United States and that the Biden administration is some kind of fake TV show that's being filmed at an alternate White House to make, to, to reveal to the people you know, the corruption, it's completely illogical. To be fair, I think Trump still believes he's the real prime uh, president of the United States well, as well. Well, that's, <laughs> that, that, gets into men, that gets into mental illness and a lack, and I'm not being jocular or facetious. This is clearly a deeply narcissistic, wounded person with extreme self-esteem problems. And part of at the heart of a lot of the of the conspiracy thinking is this alpha male concept and somebody pointed out i don't know who i wish i could credit them trump is a weak man's idea of a strong man you know he is clear i mean you know these people whine about snowflakes there's nobody who whines and bitches and and complains and grumbles in the most petty way than this person. There's nothing heroic about him. He doesn't even live up to his crimes. You know, he, un unlike Hitler or Mussolini, he didn't say, yes, we are having a coup d'etat against the state. He said, no, well, we're not really doing that. He's always modifying and no, you got me wrong. He doesn't even have the strength of his conviction and he betrays his own followers. You know, he's not worthy of respect on any level. No. But a lot of this thinking is this alpha male thinking there a lot of it is hatred of women and support of what is believed to be an alpha male which is a totally debunked concept there is no such thing in nature you know that that's been even debunked by the person who even came up with the idea of alpha male oh, yeah it was uh, yeah. it was <laughs> the ultimate fallacy of that was that this study that apparently it's all based on the alpha beta uh, sigma male or whatever it, it was all based on like wolves in captivity and i think what right they all believed it was like wolves in the wild and that represents like a you know the these wolves represent the stages of masculinity and um, right but they're in captivity so you're, you're basing your you know your astrology for incels on kind of a flawed data model <laughs> in the first place well and, yeah. and well this 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 thing about about the alpha male which is central to these people's belief that um, you know, that there is a deliberate program of emasculation going on against males. Um, this gets to the heart of the left-hand path and why I say that a, a misunderstanding of the left-hand path, which is feminine wisdom, um, you know, in the, in the true left-hand path, in the authentic left-hand path, 
the feminine is seen as the strong, the powerful. Kali, for instance, the goddess who, and this is typical, Jordan Peterson, who is the very epitome of this kind of stupidity, this sophomoric pseudo-intellectuality, this moron who has read a little Jung and a little bit of Campbell, and people who've never read a book think he's a fucking genius. Um, he, he personally, like, attacked the goddess Kali as representing feminism. This is, this is how warped their idea is, that, that, that there's attack on maleness, you know, by, by an evil feminine force. So that, that's also a crucial part of it, the misunderstanding of the left-hand path being about feminine wisdom mm. and strength and the goddess, but it's not feminism. It's not what they think it is. No. So this, this is really a very warping and distorting part of the problem we're dealing with. Um, just going back very briefly to why do you think, cause I have a friend that um, has been on this show recently, one, and he... Um, he often looks at what he considers to be, and this is a big part of conspiracy theory that I don't think gets discussed from people that aren't conspiracy theories very, uh, that often, which is that there seems to be this belief that big media groups and, uh, you know, um, large, you know, corporations and companies. The, are, the, lame, the lame stream media, which you oh, must yeah, always follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The sheeple, that's the other one, isn't it? But the, yes. um, they, they're, they're part of their belief is that that these companies and these big huge media entities are all signaling each other using kind of occult uh symbols yeah. and occult um yeah. you know the famous one is when they do this or you know right um, well if i if i do this uh, it will yeah. be used as proof of my occultism you yeah, know exactly absolutely it, and it's it is interesting but why do you th the thing i don't get is what why would they do it why, why would they need to telegraph to each other like that that's it this is right. the it's like, surely, well, if they're a big cabal, they can just talk to each let's, other. Let's, let's focus on that for a moment. That's yeah. a very important part of what Oasis has been researching. Mm -hmm. This, okay, this idiotic idea that huge media conglomerates and pop stars and movie stars, because, and there's a lot of hatred of just wealthy, attractive people that can get laid, basically. A lot of it is, it just comes down to something that simple they must be Satanists because they are rich, they can have sex, they have money, therefore they must be evil pedophiles who are, who are taking blood from children. This idea that, it, let's say there were secret societies, which there have been, by the way, nobody's denying that in history there are not the Tongs, the Cosa Nostra, you know, secret societies exist, the Tula Gesellschaft, there are secret societies that plot things in private and then do them. Do they advertise what they're doing through the media? No, they do not. Do they send signals through novels, movies, pop songs, TV shows? You know, this is one of the most bizarre misconceptions in this conspiracy fantasy, the very thing you're bringing up, that they, you know, that they make hand gestures and symbols to and I mean, and so that every idiot with a blog can understand the conspiracy that is being yeah, perpetuated you, on them. Give it away, especially in the day of the the age of the internet, where every occult symbol is is a few clicks away. You know, surely, you right? Think, why would you put it out there? It and just and, make and sense. the idea, the idea that these incredibly banal people like Hillary Clinton or Fauci or Podesta are occultists, you know, also occult are out in the open now you know there, there's plenty of people who are if they were why wouldn't they be pushing a genuine occultist agenda you know it's it's completely nonsensical but this is one of the stupidest ideas of all that what secret societies and and all these sinister cabals do is announce what they're doing through the media to let millions of people know it and then to and why wouldn't they stop doing it because if every idiot with a blog about conspiracy can can interpret and decipher <laughs> these symbols, what what possible use is for them to continue to do it? You know, it's like Stanley Kubrick is a big part of this conspiracy thinking. The idea that he he let people know through messages in The Shining that he faked the moon landing after doing 2001. 
So he then wanted to let people know through secret symbolism in his 1980 film, The Shining, you know, or Eyes Wide Shut, his last film. There's a whole cult of people who think, ah, that revealed really what this pedophile satanic society is really like. And if you study it, there are clues to it. You know, that, that this is a big idea that pop stars, directors, movie stars are revealing the secret plan. And I have been accused of it too. Like this, these interviews that I gave in the 80s are consistently cited. That's why I used it in my song, They, in 2020. I have myself playing a conspiracy theorist researching myself. There's this, you know, this idiotic use of my quotations from the 80s as if I announced the plan for the new world order. And then, and they, and then these people, then like people like Kanye West and, you know, George Bush, who, George Bush, by the way, who watched my interview, The First Family of Satanism, at the religious broadcasting convention, and was completely behind the satanic panic. He loved the satanic panic. He and the Reagan administration supported it. And yet these people think George Bush was part of the New World Order, part of the satanic society. You know, I know firsthand that's not true. So I think, again, we should get to some of the questions that were asked again. Maybe we should finish we should, those up. We'll do that. But I just want to kind of clarify a point that I've always had um, where, with this sort of occult symbology in the mainstream. It's just, yeah. it, it, it's, it just looks cool. I think that's kind of what it is. You know, it's artists right. are inspired by the occult often because it has a, right. a, a good aesthetic to it. You know, right. It's, right. You know, I'm a filmmaker. I often put occult stuff in my you know, in my in my right. films, because it adds a layer of you know of something to it, an aesthetic layer that right. people resonate with, and that's kind of that's right. what it is, really. I mean, the way I see it, anyway, that's that's what it is. But um, well, I mean, my my book, The Satanic Screen, uh, goes into detail. What is the real correlation between cinema and true occultism? Very little, mm -hmm. you know. In fact, it's the other way around. Most of what these people's ideas of what occultism is comes from some Hollywood screenwriters, completely fictional nonsense. It's not rooted in anything real. This idea that Hollywood in Los Angeles is a hotbed of serious occultism and ceremonial magic is absolutely not true. Anyone who lives there for any amount of time would know that. I mean, like you take a real occultist like Kenneth Anger, why wouldn't he have been greeted and given billion dollar budgets instead of starving, making, you know, 20 minute amateur films, basically? Why, you know, pe people who are actually interested in occultism have not been rewarded by Hollywood at whatsoever. But uh, but they'll have a reason for that, too. You know, mm -hmm. there's yeah. always an excuse. Let's look at a question from Facebook. I like this one from Red Moon Rising. Like how much disinformation is full knowingly dipped uh, dipped like poison into the well to provoke shock and awe, ignorance and compliance, or are or are all such acts as thus engaged merely puppets of a greater archonic purpose to divide seekers from truth? Right. Well, I, yeah. I, as I told her, that's a very pertinent question. The thing is, I, I can't give you an exact percentage, but what we are looking at in Oasis, how much of this conspiracy theory thinking is pushed by political actors as a kind of non-political propaganda that makes people think, well, this isn't really coming from a political party. A lot of it is very clever propaganda, and it is indeed Putin is the master of it. Putin doesn't have a good army, as we can see. He doesn't have the technical and technological resources to create his uh, neo-Russian empire that he wants to create. But he did master the idea that Americans are very uneducated and your own people are Anglo-American cousinhood. Brexit absolutely was very much pushed by Russian propaganda, and I'm sure you know that, in, in, the, in the British media. I mean, Putin put a lot of energy into his overall scheme of on the chessboard of Europe, removing England from Europe was a very important goal to him. So first of all, there are specific political players pushing these conspiracy ideas. 
and but they're not they're not revealing that they're coming from there. In fact, they pretend to be from ordinary people. But a lot of it is sheerly fake. You know, that's one thing. I know that the Trump campaign and people connected to the Trump campaign generate conspiracy theories, but they don't announce on it. This is a, a Trump political campaign. They they put it here, they put it there, they they put little Easter eggs with these political ideas hidden in them, like a Trojan horse. So they seem neutral. They seem, but I mean, I think a, to answer her question, a lot of this is deliberate disinformation. The internet has become a great playground for political propagandists to push demonization of the enemy without coming right out. And you don't have to say it. You can spread a rumor to destroy someone's reputation and career. And that's really what's happening. And that's kind of, I mean, that's QAnon, isn't it, really? I mean, QAnon's yeah. the ultimate version of that. I've never seen something like QAnon before with a with an right. actual, a figurehead, you know, like Trump. It, it, that was the strangest thing, because in, in the past, like you said, conspiracy theorists would attack leaders. They would attack these kind of, um, like George Bush was a great example. Right. Alex right. Jones was there protesting George Bush. Now he's back in. The, the prime minister, well, the president. I keep saying prime minister, sorry, I'm British. Right, <laughs> right. Know, um, but it's we had very... a we had a revolution. We kicked you out. That uh, we don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, w I was on I was on the side of the redcoats, though. I think it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were fighting the Spanish at the time as well, but you know, right. Uh, but, but yeah, no, it's uh, but it is fascinating that QAnon had this kind of figurehead, this kind of this this king. You know, it, it was. Uh, that that's a new thing i think i've not seen that in any other conspiracy yeah we i mean we could we could go on for 15 hours analyzing this thing but another like oasis is trying to analyze what are the different pillars of this and this is as you say a very unique aspect of this wave of conspiracy fantasy the interesting thing you know i don't want to generalize but the average conspiracy fantasists who pushes these particular cluster of ideas, they believe that they are nonconformists who are rebelling against the government and against the elite, but they believe that a inherited millionaire who is deeply entrenched in the media was basically a reality TV star, you know, part of New York society, just exactly like Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, comes from the same social world as Epstein. You know, how many pictures of Ghislaine Maxwell and Trump, you know, are together? And he even wished her well. He, he is the epitome of the wealthy elite. Uh, these people are very largely veiled anti-Semitic people who look at globalism. And yet the Trump empire is global. Um, most of his lawyers and even his family are Jewish. You know, what, so how are they seeing him as this, if, if all of those things are what represent the evil elite for them, how do they see him as the outlier, the rebel? You know, what, what a brilliant PR job he's done. He is the elite saying we're, we're fighting the elite, mm. you know. And and it, and this deep state idea, like yes, I'm the president of the United States, which is still the most powerful person in the world, and yet I'm a victim. The deep state is not letting me govern properly. You know, th this it's like a it's an unwinnable battle because it's completely illogical. But how is he not representing the elite? Well, how are the Kushners? How are the Kushners not the elite? You know. They'll say that he's their man on the inside, though, won't they? You know, he's the, um, you know, he's 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 an elitist, but he's there representing. He's well, but but, yeah, but it's not not only Trump, but like I've seen people who you would think are alternative kind of people who are rebels against the government, who once would have wanted nothing to do with politicians or government, like revering, you know, mainstream politicians like Mitch McConnell, you know, totally boring and uncharismatic non-entities. This is, it's very strange. I mean, they are not in any way opposing anything. They are they are supporting conventional politicians who just use rhetoric to get fear going so that they get elected. So they're not really rebels at all. They are supporting the political system as it is. And of course, they want to clear the swamp 
but it is the swamp. They, they are supporting the very swamp they want to clear. So going to the left-hand path, and obviously... It, well, feels... I want to. I, I want to answer the second part of oh, her yeah, question. Yeah. The the yes, a lot of the, a lot of this is not spontaneous. Uh, you know, the people speaking. That's the way it's interpreted. That that it's it's the spontaneous voice of the people. A lot of it is manipulated by political players, and there are even you know we can even name there are organizations that are hired to flood the internet with bullshit about certain topics. And and then and then like an infection, once it catches on, like a like a rumor, a false rumor, it becomes repeated as truth till you no longer can trace where it comes from. So that is a big part of it. And then the second part of the question is the spiritual aspect of this, where she said, if you could read the last part of that again. Uh, or, or are all such actors thus engaged merely puppets of a greater archonic, archontic purpose to divide seekers from truth? Right. So this gets into the spiritual and metaphysical dimension. I do believe that these conspiracy theory mania is, you could say, part of what Gnostics would refer to as the demiurgic problem in, in our world. The demiurge, which is the imposter god, the malevolent imposter god that, that people name Yahweh, Allah, Jehovah, but is really Ealdabaoth, the, the demiurge, this pushing a fake truth and claiming this is we are, we are seeking the truth and yet being totally absorbed in delusion and psychotic fantasy that is the very essence of the demiurge so there is a metaphysical aspect to it and that gets into what i was referring to before the guinonian concept of counter initiation how much of this occult conspiracy thinking is rooted in theosophy in the order of the golden dawn in uh 19th century concepts of occultism you may be aware of nesta webster this english woman who wrote a very influential book about secret societies most of her ideas are just being redressed and repackaged a lot of these christian ideas of evil conspiracy go back to occultists like theosophy um you know, a lot of it is just it's just repackaged and rehashed 19th century occultism. And it's often, and often Blavatsky was wrong. I mean, she she brought oh, back horribly wrong. But Blavatsky was a con woman who just made up nonsense off the top of her head and presented it at a time when it was difficult to research these things. As the you know, she's a plagiarist, and you know, the secret doctrine is is complete mishmash of stolen nonsense. So you've got people who don't have critical thinking don't understand history who are and their their roots are you know conmanship and bullshit from from and that's why i say a lot of it reminds me of scientology it's just sheer nonsense yeah should we uh, answer don burden's question as well yeah um, from facebook he said are there any conspiracies you do believe in like maybe the dumbing down of public school curriculums or the emphasis on gender confusion in the name of affirmation I'm not saying these conspiracies exist, but they're both things I've heard many people talk about lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, as I said earlier, I think it's important in, we are fighting lies, we are fighting disinformation. And the fact is, if you put all your energy into the rabbit hole of fake conspiracies that don't even exist, you're gonna miss the real ones. Governments are conspiring to hide their crimes, to hide, what's really happening. That is the nature of governments, all governments, every single one, left wing, right wing, middle of the road, all, all politicians conspire to make themselves look good and to hide their failures. Uh, criminals are deeply entrenched in the legal system and the political system to, to you know, exercise power. That, those are the real crimes. I mean, are there real conspiracies? As I said, the, a conspiracy to hide the truth about the assassination of John F. Kennedy, I have no doubt about it, but I can tell you it was just human motives of political power. It wasn't reptile people. It wasn't aliens. It wasn't, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just the dynamics of power as has always been played on the political stage. So, you know, there are hundreds of conspiracies. 
there was a CIA conspiracy in Chile that removed a legal government. There was a CIA conspiracy in Iran to remove the legally elected head of Iran because he wanted to go against, yeah, against British oil. You know, these are real conspiracies, but they're, they're boring to these people. There's no Satanism involved. There's no aliens. There's no, you know, there's no occult anything to it. It's just like mafia brutality on the political level. Yeah. So, so yes, there do 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 powerful people if they have the means and the lack of ethics to hide their the truth about themselves. Do they do that? Of course they do. But let's be realistic. And if these people who put all their energy into you know revealing fake conspiracies that never even happened, if they if they're really serious about these issues you know, let's unite to reveal the true conspiracies instead of the fake ones. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a researcher into conspiracies. I am an investigative journalist who has, I have proven several conspiracies happen, but they're just not on the level of, of, of super efficiency, of specter-like, you know, Fu Manchu-like total control. That, that, that actually is an obscuration, and it actually becomes a distraction from the real conspiracy theory. Well, we, we've spoken about thing. this. We've spoken about this yeah. in the past in, in Facebook messages. You know, the, it feels like everyone's being pushed into these little macro kind of um, activist states, aren't they? You know, mm -hmm. both the right and the left. Where mm -hmm. and it feels like everyone's focusing all their energy on these smaller issues, and in the background. This huge corporate behemoth is just plowing through the world, and uh, I don't know. I right. come from, I come very much from a Beaujolais and kind of William Gibson perspective, where I, I, I always got my eye on corporations and the way that absolutely are slowly well, taking over, and it's it's really yeah. Let let me let me underscore what I said before. Mm. If these people who are so, they say, okay, they're uneducated people who don't have never learned how to use critical thinking. They don't know how to, quote, do their own research because they don't know how to determine what is factual and what is not. They don't know how historians work to prove what really what likely happened and what didn't happen. They don't have these tools. Um, the problem with that is that it, it, they're, they're projecting fantasies into what can actually be proven. Let's look at the names of the people who are running the huge mega corporations that own every damn thing. If they're concerned with media, you know, this is another bizarre thing, like thinking that Trump is a millionaire celebrity is not part of the elite. They act like there's only the liberal media, like there's only CNN and NBC and the liberal media. But Murdoch's empire is gigantic and has huge influence and is a kingmaker but they act like he's some kind of like plucky rebel but that is just as much the lamestream media this is one of the the pretenses it's kind of like when punk rock went mainstream and got signed to major record companies you can't be punk rock anymore you know and the, the, it's kind of like a rock and roll mentality to the current right wing like we're rebels we're nonconformists, but actually they're supporting extremely entrenched elite power structures that are corporate. And and I will I'll repeat it again: the only conspiracy really going on is capitalism, hypercapitalism, corporations controlling everything, absolutely everything. Facebook, you know, X wor worry about Musk, but to them he's a rebel hero, you know. So this, yeah, cat, we're, we're, look at capitalism and look at the at, look at corporations. We can find out their names. They are not secret societies. We can know who are running these corporations. Yeah. That's the real problem. The shadowy shareholders. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. That would yeah. be the next thing probably. But no, the um, I think we should move on because obviously a time's ticking as well. Yeah. So one thing right. I just want to define when it comes to the left hand path, obviously. I think when you come, when you talk about it, you're talking about it from a very traditional, the origins of the, of the left hand path. But why do you think it's changed so much now? Why, why is the kind of a cult? Well, I, cult I, I would counter that whole perspective. There is 
it, it doesn't have any, there, there's no mutation. There is, the left-hand path is a phrase that comes from Indian mysticism, either Tantric Buddhism, Tantric Vedic, tradition or even Jainism, a lesser known Indian religion. It, I, I would deny that these new definitions that have been, where, where, as I said in, in my recent lecture, which I gave in Leipzig at the, at the Wave Gothic Treffen, Madame Blavatsky, the Order of the Golden Dawn, Crowley, basically didn't understand tantric idea of what the left-hand path means, which is Tantra, that's what the left-hand path is. It is the tantric tradition, not neo-tantra, but the genuine, authentic, spiritual lineage. And what Blavatsky misunderstood it, Crowley took it from her, the Golden Dawn took it from Blavatsky, and then that 19th century group of European and English occultists took the left-hand path phrase, totally distorted it, and then LeVay and Aquino and, and their imitators in a very simplistic, childish way, said, oh, if Blavatsky and Crowley and the Golden Dawn say the left-hand path is evil, then I am evil, I will embrace. But that's, again, a total misunderstanding of what it means. So to me, it, as something else I pointed out, like Lucifer, it is a problem of translation. It is a problem of not understanding what the thing means. So yes, in general, it's, it's like I was saying before about fascism and communism. Left-wing people that call Trump or Boris Johnson fascist, they are not fascist. They are capitalist plutocrats. They are in no way fascists, not even remotely. And, you know, right-wing people who call Biden or other liberal leaders who are actually, in fact, quite conservative, um, communists and Marxists is nonsense. It's, I would say the left-hand path phrase is used by Satanists and occultists in such a wrong way as to, to, to be vacated of all meaning in the same way that fascist and communist is just used to mean whatever I don't like. Uh, the right-hand path and the left-hand path are, are two paths that lead to the same goal, which is liberation. They're different methods. They are not enemies of each other. It isn't like the right-hand path is about conformism and submission to a god. In fact, the real left-hand path is total submission and submergence to Shakti or to the female wisdom. I mean, that it's it just, I mean, I could go on and I have gone on and I will continue to battle this misimpression. Uh, the true, so I don't, I don't buy that there could be a new definition of the left-hand path. I understand some people do, but Crowley, you know, had a big influence on that in his definitions of the left-hand path about the Black Brothers and that sort of thing. And it sort of trickled into the general occult community. But the, you know, the left-hand path never was associated with individualism, Black magic, Satanism. It, it never, you know, that it's just bogus. That's fake folk uh etymology we could talk about this for it's one of these sort of subjects we could just talk about for hours and hours maybe we should talk right. about it again and have another another show about it as well but um so let us know what you're up to in terms of um you know output like books music etc right well on you know i've never been a political person or any kind of idea i've never expressed any particular ideology and when i have it has been been on a spiritual basis so i'm definitely going out on a limb by by saying this conspiracy thinking has to be confronted it has to be attacked it has to be debunked it is it is an impediment to spiritual progress Unlike what these people think, it is a major obstacle to initiatory work. And if you are infected with it, it's going to be a problem that's going to stop you from becoming enlightened because it counters non-dualism and becomes so childishly simplistic and dualistic and centered on good versus evil, it, it makes you stupid. So that is why one of the things that I've been doing is this formation of Oasis, which at this point is a think tank to study what are the causes and conditions of this mental infection 
And eventually we will get into, well, how can people be deprogrammed and freed and countered and live in reality again? So that's one thing. During the pandemic, as I've mentioned in the three interviews we've done thus far, the all of my major literary works have been revamped, expanded, and fine, put into a final version. So the Manson file, Myth and Reality of an Outlaw Shaman, came out finally in 2022 after many obstacles because of the COVID lockdown. So that the final edition of that has been printed last year in May of 2022. The Satanic Screen uh, is being reprinted at this very moment in a British version will come out on Head Press, oh, a French version, uh, an Italian version, a Spanish version, my book, Flowers from Hell, a new, deluxe, beautiful English version is being printed in South America at this moment. So this is work that's been going on during the whole pandemic period. So my whole literary collected works, with the exception of Demons of the Flesh, which I know people want, yeah, are all I'm coming out. Yeah, yeah. Are, are coming out in new versions. I'm working on several novels, one of which will be released in November of this year. Um, um, on my band camp, you can find all of the albums that I've released since 2019. And when I was in Sweden just now in Stockholm last week, I gave a lecture on Abraxas, the Gnostic deity, and that will be my next book to come out um, on Anya publishing in America and edition Pansof in France. Manus Sinistra, Spanish speaking, and there will be other versions of it. So that will be a thoroughgoing study of Abraxas and his connection to Gnosticism, to culture, to literature, to music, a definitive volume on this mysterious deity, Abraxas. And at the same um, event in Stockholm last week, I also premiered two new songs that are a, a very different musical direction that I'm taking that will come out on a EP called Destroy, she said. And uh, I've given you one of them to play. You can premiere it on your show, and it is called The Observer. And that is the flip side of this double song EP, Destroy, she said. And then after that, I have another album called Time Machine. I'm a workaholic, so I've got <laughs> too much, too much stuff coming. A documentary I'm working on. These things will be announced in my social media as they become available. So if you want to hear The Observer um, and you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the best way to hear it will be to download the audio version of this podcast because we'll put it on there and avoid the endless copyright strikes that happen on YouTube. Right. <laughs> yeah, so right. It's, a lot, it's a lot easier to put that in the audio version, but the audio version is available then, all over the place. It's on every podcast platform. You can get it. Right. And then I should add, too, that really all of these things, my literary work, my musical work, my film work, all of it is part of my spiritual teaching. And I do directly three days a week teach a select group of students. And this oasis project is part of my spiritual work in that I am opposing untruth. Mm -hmm. And that is the nature of spiritual work. So unfortunately, this ideological idiocy is one of the main obstacles we have to confront. It's a kind of addiction mm -hmm. and an obscuration to reality. So that that's the center of my work and all the other things radiate out of that. Mm. Excellent. Well, it's always a pleasure, and I'm sure we'll have you back on soon, hopefully sooner rather than later this time. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, thanks a lot, and um, yeah, uh, see you soon. We we just covered the tip of the iceberg, but we I think we've gotten into some deep areas that have not been sufficiently explored. So thank you for having me, and we will certainly have, as the world becomes more insane, we will definitely have plenty of fodder to discuss in the future. Brilliant. Well, thanks a okay. lot. Okay, my blessings to all of you. Thank you for watching and see you soon.